Hello. I suppose we're back. Been gone for a bit. Hello, boys! I'm back! Alright, here's the movie I did today. Being the Oscars are coming up, I thought I'd start reviewing Oscar movies again, but start with uh, two movies from the first Oscars that I hadn't gotten to yet. So I only have two more movies to do, and this is one of them. The Crowd by King Vidor, who wrote and directed the film. He was a very famous silent film director. He was famous mostly just for making movies that were really, really good, and pushed filmmaking in general. Uh, speaking of which, I guess this movie does do that to some degree. The acting is really good, for one thing. G promo, take two. Hello. For over a hundred years. Line? Sorry. My bad. Like many silent movies from right before talkies took off, or movies with sound, it feels like it ought to have sound in it. It's basically written like a talkie. The movie starts at the birth of our main character, and that kind of worried me at first, because I wondered if this was going to be like a lot of biopics are, and then they start at the beginning of a person's life, and the movie goes pretty much until the person dies. I thought that's what this movie was going to be, but it wasn't. What it does instead is it starts at his birth and shows snippets from a childhood and such, but basically fast tracks until he's an adult. And that's when he meets this woman who he like immediately falls in love with and they get married. It's things like that happen all the time in the 20s, I'm assuming. But unfortunately, after they get married, I feel like when the movie starts to slowly fall apart, the problem is there's not really a plot. What a twist! After the introduction and everything, which is usually when the mo most movies don't have plots anyway, that was forgivable for not having a plot, you know, because it's still introducing the characters, kind of showing what's going on, and then gets to this point when they get married and things seem to be working out for him for a bit, and I realize that this is a movie that the filmmaker decided that since it has a really interesting main character, it doesn't need to have a plot. Genius, genius, genius! I mean, there are problems later on. The man has marital problems with his wife, and then that kind of becomes the plot for a bit, but it's not like the main plot. It's not the thing that carries the whole thing through. The only thing carrying this movie is this person, and you can't really carry a movie entirely on a character. And I know things happen to that character and everything, and you argue that it's a character study, but character study still needs strong plots in order to be good. I mean, that's just my opinion, and I know I'm not the biggest fan of character-based films. I mean, there's a few that are pretty good, but all of those also have a really strong plot, such as A Clockwork Orange. That's a really good character study, but that's because it also has a really strong plot, a really good theme, and a really strong message. This movie just has a strong character, the plot is lacking, the story's lacking, and there's basically no message. It's just kind of meandering on this person for the first 20 years of his life, and then all of his marital troubles once we get to 20. So I would kind of say that the flow of this movie is just wrong. The first half hour is really good, but after he meets this girl and marries her, the film is basically over. That's what it feels like, because the story's over, you know? There's nothing else for him to do, but then he has to carry the rest of this movie by himself with basically nothing. We watch him, like, raise a family that he has his marital problems and they're maybe gonna separate or something but then they get back together at the end that's it and this could have been a pretty good movie you just need like something else something to hold it up but it doesn't <laughs> and truthfully if like instead of him like just marrying her and her saying yes right away if that became the movie of him trying to like seduce this girl but her, her like just always being like pushing him back that would have been a lot stronger of a plot it would have made her character a lot stronger too instead of just being like the woman who's the wife too. I mean, again, it's like their relationship worked really well for this film, but because they kind of just rush through it and we don't really get to see too much uh, between them in this initial phase of their relationship. It's like after that, the movie loses all of its passion. Like, the fire that's really burning brightly at the beginning of this movie, like, just it suddenly snuffed out right then. Please, Mr. Keller, don't kill me! This has a lot of common with Sunrise, I think. Except, while that was a drama, this is more akin to a comedy. But there's a lot of similar messages, both are about relationships and about the problems with those relationships and when it's a good time to, like, split up. This movie doesn't have toxic messages in it, so it's mostly just about their relationship. It's about this one relationship and their problems. And it's not trying to say, like, this is the, what everyone should do, like Sunrise is. Which is why Sunrise is a problem and not a, not a movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a movie, it's a problem. You lose! Good day, sir! 
So I guess the theme of this movie is ultimately just like the troubles and tribulations of one man throughout his life. And I guess it's called The Crowd because he's like basically just a face in the crowd. He could be anyone, you know, it's a story of anyone. He's a John Everyman type. Similar to her, she's like a Jane every woman. And maybe because of that, we're supposed to like imprint ourselves on them and then root for them because of it. Is that why character pieces work? So I'm not understanding about character pieces. The, it's all about imprinting yourselves onto like these famous people or these interesting people. All right, all right, all right. I mean, the problem with this film is that there isn't a consistent plot that changes between scenes, and because of that, the scenes themselves feel like they almost don't flow together. That's the biggest flaw in this film, other than the plot is really lacking. It's that the scenes just feel like they're just random nonsense from this guy's life. Like we're just seeing like a photo album that a photographer that just jumped out and took a random picture at random intervals, whose name was also random for some reason. Say cheese! Cheese! So like even as a character piece, this is kind of lacking because these characters aren't worth making a character piece about. You always this stupid? Did you take lessons? I took lessons! So it's really a product of its time, and I can see why it was probably really popular at that time. But for a modern watching audience, I really wouldn't recommend this movie. Anyway, I think I'll finish it up there because I literally can't think of another thing to say about this movie. Please like and subscribe. You know the drill.